Hey guys, John here. Today I'm going to teach you how to make a snare drum in Citrus. All right, I think you get the idea. So let's turn off the effects and let's turn off some processing. So on my mixer, I have a compressor and a little bit of distortion, and we're going to talk about that at the end of this patch. So the two main things to really keep in mind with a snare drum is the drum sound itself, so the fundamental sound of the drum, and also the rattles that really make it a snare drum. So keeping that in mind, let's look at this first operator. And this first one is basically going to be the fundamental frequency of that snare drum. So generally for snare drums, you want to be between 170 to 200 hertz for that fundamental. So let's mute all these effects here for everything uh, in this whole patch as well. And let's listen to just the fundamental. And if you don't know how I'm muting this, I'm right clicking these little buttons here. Let's turn this up a little bit because it's hard to hear. So that itself right there is literally just a tone, and that's going to be the bottom end of that snare drum. So let's look at the envelope of that snare drum here, so this fundamental. So in the volume envelope, it's just kind of a peak and then kind of just cascades down and kind of play with this curve a little bit to kind of, kind of the taste, I suppose. And then really the next part is what I'm doing here is operator two, three, and four are all, all going to be noise oscillators. So let's look at the, the second one here. Let's listen to just the second. And the third, or the second, I guess technically. So if it's just noise, this is going to be the first noise. Second noise. And the third noise. So they're basically doing the same thing. They're all noise oscillators, but I'm kind of band passing them at different frequency spots. So as you notice, the first noise is a little bit more high pitched. The second one's a little bit more mid range. And the third one is a little bit lower end. Now the key component with this is mixing these, these together in the same spot, or not the same spot, but like mixing these together to where they sound believable, like they're one thing. They're not necessarily three different operators using noise. And those three sound like this. So you're really covering a lot of different sections. And with this, you can kind of really mix them to taste for the snare drum. Now with the fundamental added as well, It's starting to come together. So let's look at these filters and see what's actually happening here. So I have the bandpass, and for the first filter, number one right here, the cut's gonna be all the way up and the resonance is also all the way up. On the second filter, the cut's maybe a little less than halfway and the resonance, I pulled that back as well here. Third filter, the cut's not even really on and then the resonance is all the way at the top. So th with a cut and the resonance, that's how you're really gonna pick those three different spots. If I had another filter, I probably would have gone for uh, another operator to do more noise to really make it different, make it add more noise to it. So then we start adding the effects to it. So let's look at our effects here. Let's turn these on and let's look at the effects. Really, all of what you're hearing, there's no delay in any of this. It's just reverb, and this is actually the preset. If we click down on this arrow here, we can go to reverb, and we can hit drum room. So this really brings out that sound of this, uh, of this snare. And for the effects, I'm sending all the noise to this effects module right here. So these are cranked all the way to the top, and I added just a little bit of effects for the fundamental, because it doesn't technically make sense to have the rattles reverberate, but the fundamental not at all. So there's a tiny bit, not so it gets carried away, but just to add a little bit of that realism there to it. And it's pretty close, the last couple screws that we really do have to tighten is going to be the compressor and the overdrive. So for this example, I am using Ozone 8 Vintage Compressor. It's a great compressor for this. Um, you can look at these settings. I have 4 to 1 ratio, attack 19 milliseconds, and then release 41. And I'm kind of squashing it quite a bit. So with this compressor on and off, it sounds like this. So that's really going to lock this sound in and really kind of make it focused and poppy, which is the point of this compressor. And then the last thing is going to be the overdrive to really kind of bring out some of the harmonics, the partials of this sound as well. So here's with and without the distortion.
And that's pretty much this in, in a nutshell or in a drum shell, I could say. One thing to also keep in the back of your mind is generally generally with types of kick drums or tom drums or snare drums, once the stick hits the uh, hits the skin of the drum, it's going to slightly change the pitch of the drum. So you could go into your fundamental here, go to your pitch envelope and kind of make a small little little line down here to kind of accentuate the pitch change that happens really, really, really quick, which is almost essential on kick drums and toms. But for the snare drum, I didn't find it too necessary to do, but that's just another thing to add to the realism of this sound. So that's pretty much this patch in a nutshell. I hope you learned something and we'll see you in the next video.